Today we're going to show you the HM130 Max sawmill that we have. We just got this set up finally. Uh, we're going to saw a piece of ash. We're trying to make a shed that's going to go over top of this mill to keep it out of the snow and out of the rain. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we've learned so far. But first, let's get into this cut and show you how it works. This 130 Max is set up with the Kohler Command Pro 14 horsepower motor. It does have electric start. I don't have the battery set up for it yet. So it is a pull start. We're going to choke it and see if we can get this thing fired up right away. sawmill comes it comes with uh, I think two tracks set up uh, I think around uh, 12 foot uh, cut without the extra tracks we, I did buy this it has this tow board attachment that allows you to get your log up a little bit better uh, for your initial cut I did buy it with two extra tracks so the maximum cutting distance on this is about 22 and a half feet I wanted to be able to build um, rebuild the pole building that I have so I wanted the higher beams so I bought the extra tracks and the way this mill is set up you can as long as you have the space these tracks can go infinitely So what I was going for, I want a piece of material that's five and a half inches wide and I really want the most width that I can get for my support beam. So the first cut, I'm kind of taking a guess on where it's gonna come out the best. So you can see here, I'm not quite low enough. So I didn't want to waste material, so I cut it up a little bit higher. So now what I'm gonna do is probably take about a one inch board out of the top that I'll come back and resaw later that I can use. And then I'll flip it over and we'll make the next cut. Uh, the slab here, um, we have our outdoor wood burner, so none of this stuff is ever going to go to waste. So it's going to be done with one of two things. We're either going to burn it or we're going to use our Woodland Mills chipper and chip it up for mulch. One of the things that I learned is I'm going to take a one inch board. I need to pay attention on the, on the scale where I'm set. So right now I'm right at the nine inch mark. So I'm going to bring the blade up to, keep, to get it out of the way from hitting the log. So I crank that up. I'm going to bring that back. I set that back where I was at, I was at the nine inch mark. So I'm using the white scale, so this takes the curve, which is the curve is the width of the blade into consideration. So if I bring that down, you can see I'm gonna leave, put that right in place. So that's down at the eight inch mark, considering the curve, that's gonna give me a perfect one inch board. Okay, since we're looking to get a five and a half inch piece of material out of here and we have our, our first, our top side cut, it's important to pay attention to where we want to end up with. So when we flip this over, we're going to want to measure where we want to end up with to make our cut and then we'll square it up from there. So the, the board that we have off the top, uh, since it's live edge on both sides, what we're going to end up doing is maybe we'll collect a couple of these at a uh, stack together, we'll put them up vertically and then uh, use the sawmill to edge both sides. So we'll, we'll line them up, we'll cut the top to get rid of the, of the bark, flip the, the boards over, so maybe we'll end up with a four or five inch piece of lumber out of here, and then uh, we'll use the mill to, to do a couple at a time just so it's a little bit more efficient. We measured up off the bottom for our five and a half inch second cut for the, the other side, so we're gonna throw the slab and we're gonna turn it and take our third cut. So I should have showed this before. So what we're doing is we're using these brackets uh, for this sawmill shed. So as you can see, uh, it's closed on two sides. So we, we bolt through the piece of material here. So it's five and a half inches. So that's what we have cut here. So what I'm gonna do is since the piece of material can stick out on either side, I'm gonna get the biggest piece of material I can get out of here. So what we're gonna do is take basically the least amount of material off the top of this that we can. If we have a little bit of bark on the rounds of either side, that's gonna be acceptable. This is a rough cut sawmill shed, so we're not gonna make that big of a deal out of that, and it kind of maybe even adds a little bit of character. So we're gonna make this next cut. I brought that blade up, I think right about where I want it. You can almost even look down here and kind of get an idea. You're eyeballing it up 
to see um, where you're at. So maybe you're almost even, in my opinion, better off being a little bit higher, leaving more material. And if you have to come back with another pass, you know, this is something you're building for yourself, something that's gonna last a long time. You'll take another pass if you have to, but we're gonna leave the most material. So we're gonna fire it back up and make the next cut. So we cut the third side, we flipped it over, and we're gonna make our last pass to get our uh, uh, square can here, or it could be a rectangle. So we're gonna line it up. We wanna leave as much material as we can, so we're gonna fire it up and take a pass and see what it looks like. quite get it low enough, but my eyeball wasn't quite calibrated right. So we're gonna bring it back, drop it down just a little bit more and take another pass. there. I think it actually kind of adds a little bit of character. It looks pretty cool. So this will be uh, the first vertical beam that we have for our shed. We've got a couple more to mill. Do our horizontal beam. We're using our old uh, power pole. So we've got quite a bit of work left. So keep up for some more videos that we're going to do as we build the shed and as we run the mill a little bit more. If you guys like what you're seeing, please subscribe, share the videos, and keep an eye out for more videos.